Hi, I'm Eric Johnson, and I am recording a video for you concerning the uh, probably the number one killer of dogs. I know that sounds really dramatic and everything, um, but the loss of a pet is. And I think all of us share a desire to uh, lose our pets as, as late in the game as possible. Uh, it would be nice if we could get our, our dogs and cats all to be 17 or 18 when they finally go. Um, every year I, I know that America spends a pretty good bit on the vaccinations for their dogs and um, flea control, heartworm preventative and all that. And those are very, very important. Uh, if your dog got heartworms and was not treated, it would die. If your dog got uh, rabies or distemper or parvo and was not treated, it would die. Um, so that's a, a pretty dire outcome. However, um, those diseases may affect one in a thousand um, pets. Um, I'm pulling that statistic completely out of my ear. Um, but there's a, there's a disorder or, or disease, body condition, whatever, that uh, kills a lot more dogs than that. I mean, it's probably one in, one in three, uh, possibly even uh, half of all dogs are obese, um, fat dogs. And um, it, it shortens their lives considerably in, in two uh, main areas. Um, and I was going to talk to you about several things. And I'll go over uh, in advance what I was going to talk to you about. I was going to tell you why dogs get fat. And it means that it's a lot more than just treats and lack of exercise. Uh, I want to talk to you about two hormones that work together on the dog's brain and how you can control those. Um, I want to talk to you about the control of obesity. Um, and um, the use of uh, low-fat diets and, and uh, some other dietary considerations. And then I want to tell you really why it matters to me that your dog is or is not fat. So getting started then, um, let's talk about why obesity happens in dogs. Um, basically, uh, a dog starts in life growing rapidly and it's on puppy food. And uh, sooner or later, you, you stop the puppy food and you switch to an adult diet. The dog stops growing and doesn't require that much in the way of calories. And the brain uh, has two hormones. One of them is called leptin and one of them is called ghrelin. Uh, they just discovered these probably uh, as recently as uh, their early 90s. And these two hormones balance out appetite. Um, one stimulates appetite and one suppresses appetite. And these hormones are very, very powerful. One hormone is so strong that if you injected a rat with it, he would never eat again and just die. Another one is so strong that the rat would eat until he uh, could eat no more and would die. And um, fortunately there's a balance in our system that controls those two things. And in dogs it's an extremely useful uh, system. But let me explain how those two work. Um, there's a part of your brain called the amygdala. And um, that, that part of your brain basically tells you about the probabilities of success for your survival. And when a dog starts to get fat, the amygdala starts sending messages that say, hey, uh, dog, you're fat, and um, therefore, as a fat dog, you're not going to be able to elude your predators. In, in other words, you're easy pickings for the coyotes. And so the dog starts to secrete the hormone that suppresses appetite. Um, the brain, at the same time, the amygdala says, oh, by the way, you eat rabbits, metaphor for any sort of ground prey. Uh, you eat rabbits and at your current weight, you're not going to be able to catch your next rabbit. And so again, um, the body starts to secrete hormones that suppress the appetite. So the adult dog has moved through puppyhood. He's not growing anymore. He's getting the same adult dog food. And as he gets a little bit older, he doesn't need as many calories in his brain. As he starts to get a little heavy, his brain starts sending him messages that say, you know, you don't need to eat this morning. Well, that doesn't really work very well with a lot of maternal people. They're kind of like, eat. Um, I'm happy if you eat. I want you to be happy, so eat. And um, with the amygdala sending messages to the body that say, you know, hungry, don't eat. Um, you get into a situation where um, the owner has to start offering the sweeter and sweeter and more and more delicious things. Um, kind of like breaking his own diet basically overriding the hormone making the tongue more powerful than the amygdala and uh, they get him to eat you know and they'll say things like oh it's so hard to get him to eat he's so finicky uh, he won't eat that uh, I assure you if he was at near body normal body weight he would have the balance to want to eat it if he was thin um, so there's these hormones and then when the dog stops eating um, up to the owner's expectations, that's when they start plying the appetite. And when they ply the appetite, that's when the dogs get fat. So that's kind of uh, the messages to the brain that say, you know, you need to be a predator and not the prey. 
um, that's when uh, some of these weight issues start to materialize. As far as uh, control of um, obesity, it's basically uh, a variety of different things, increasing exercise, uh, finding a diet that is um, uh, lower in fat. Uh, here's a number worth writing down. Um, you want a diet for dogs that could stand to lose some weight. You want a diet that's about 5 or 6, maybe 7% crude fat. There's a couple diets out there. Uh, Blue Buffalo came up with one. It's chicken and brown rice. It's amazing. Uh, Abiderm came out with one that's low fat. And Costco, uh, Kirkland's Costco has one that's a canine weight management. It's amazing. Uh, well formulated for a diet in that cheap range. Um, beneficial healthy weight, low fat. Um, if you want to get decent results, not great, but uh, Purina Fit and Trim when you can find it. Uh, there's a couple of others out there, Nature's uh, uh, Neutral Lamb and Rice Low Fat. Anyway, that's uh, there's diets out there that are 6% crude fat. I've been also uh, considering uh, for dogs that are in emergency state, like dogs that have lumbar disc disease and other spinal issues, uh, have to lose weight really fast, like all of it today, uh, making them vegetarians. Um, putting them on uh, cans of veg all. It's a kind of a vegetable mix, giving them cans of veg all, fattening that up with some uh, green beans and raw baby carrots. All uh, work pretty well. So uh, vegetarianism, and I'm not because I love beef or cows or feel sorry for the chickens, um, but uh, mainly just because it's better for the dogs for rapid weight loss would be to go with vegetarians. Uh, um, meals, low fat diet, 6%. Uh, fat or less, or if you're lucky, uh, if you have a dog that just doesn't like his own food, just give him his own food, and him not liking it will work really well for, uh, I always say, you know, well, if he doesn't like his food, just keep offering it to him, and he will lose three or four free pounds before he even starts eating again, uh, because I assure you that they will start to eat as they lose weight. Um, I don't know if you know the statistic. This is another good one to write down. You can amaze your friends at parties. 45 days without eating three days without water, but 45 days without eating it. That's how long you can live. So, that being said, I have some other information for you about how much to feed the dogs. Um, on a low-fat diet, 6% uh, crude fat, well-formulated, um, here's a number that might might want to write down. It's a tenth, um, excuse me, it's a quarter of a cup of food per 10 pounds of body weight once a day. So for a 40-pound dog, you'd get a cup of food a day on the low-fat stuff, and you'd lose weight. Um, now let me just close the video by telling you why I, my selfish reasons for why I want your dog to lose weight, uh, especially my customers. A lot of really good dogs are out there, and a lot of really good dogs are fat. And a lot of dogs lose years. Uh, they lose quality years because their backs and hind legs and all the other parts of their body start to ache. They end up on arthritis medicine early, and they ultimately end up laying down with bad backs and bad legs. Can't get up, can't move around, unhappy, miserable, he's in pain, suffering, and let's put him to sleep. I want that to be as late as possible for most of those dogs. And since I know that maybe one in a thousand of my patients is going to die of rabies, one in a thousand might die of parvo, one in a thousand is going to die of um, some sort of a blood disorder, and um, I don't know three or four out of a hundred are going to die of cancer, but a lot of the big guys especially are going to lay down with their back legs out um, and, and, and die of that, and then in the small breed dogs they end up with enlarged hearts, um, pulmonary hypertension, collapsing tracheas, um, and difficulty getting around when they're obese, and I want that to not happen either. So diets extend life, and they, they allow me to procrastinate at putting them down. They just last longer, uh, have a higher quality of life at the end, and I don't have to put them to sleep as early as uh, I would if they were uh, very heavy. So as you're um, possibly uh, keeping your dog five, 10 pounds overweight, um, seriously consider getting the weight down and getting those extra years out of the dog. And it's not frivolous extra years. Those are quality years where the dog's getting around a lot better because he's, he's not as heavy. So that was the content of today's um, message. I hope that um, you uh, learned something. And uh, there should be more information, uh, including a downloadable version of this, possibly, uh, assuming I remember to put it up, at drjohnson.com. Uh, there may also be a download section at veterinary411.com. Hopefully that will be helpful to you as well.